Hallelujah. Glory to God. We made it. It's me, Pastor Lynn. You're watching us on Retro. Boy, we've come through a stormy time. Hurricane Irma tried to knock us out, but we survived. We are Hurricane Irma survivors, and we are storm resistant. How? Because we are confident in the God that we serve, that not only is he with us in the good weather, but when the weather starts to change, He's with us. Storms come. Not only hurricanes, but storms in life. We go through ugly things, divorces, bankruptcy, foreclosure. Whatever it is, the storm comes. It comes sometimes unannounced. But do you stand through the storm? Today's message, you're going to be amazed at how you can be strong. If your storm is on the horizon, you're ready. God's already got an exit ready for you. Well, we're going to go into Shabbat right now, and they are going to be ministering, and they're going to absolutely bring the power of God into your room. You're going to be tapping your feet, and you want to march around. They are so gifted. As they minister, the name of the Lord be glorified. See you in a few minutes. Just lift your hands and begin to worship Jesus. Lift high his name. Just get her into a deep place of worship. Magnify his name. The name of Jesus is lifted high. Lifted high, lifted high. The name of Jesus is lifted high in this land. The name of Jesus is lifted high, lifted high, lifted high. The name of Jesus is lifted high. Lift it high. 
revival is coming down and our sons and our daughters shall be saved. Let's prophesy it. Come on. Sons and daughters shall be saved. We speak that our spiritual leaders will lead the church into holiness again instead of homosexuality, adultery, and fornication. We speak that our musicians, worship leaders, choir directors, gospel and Christian music artists will be free from the unclean spirits of sexual perversion and present their bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to you, God. God has abortion, addiction, suicide, depression have become strongholds. God, we thank you for a great awakening, awakening, awakening. Awakening is coming to America. I'm with you. Wherever you go. Hallelujah. He said, Law. I'm with you. Lynn, I'm with you always. I'm with you. Always. No matter where you go. Mm. He's on Fowler Street right now. He's right here. Are you grateful? He's right here. Will you open your minds to the fuel of the word today? Open your minds. It's free. It's going to keep you for the next few days to recover. We've got to recover. Our minds have been tossed. And you know, the world has nothing to offer us. Those meteorologists hate the sound on that weather station. Okay, it's coming closer. Oh, wait, it went to the left. Oh, wait, it's going to the right. Oh, wait, it's going to the center. Now confidence. They're guessing just the way we would. But on Christ the solid rock I stand. Hallelujah. I got on that rock and said, oh, God, I'm standing on you. All other ground. Is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Declare it. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All So if we were looking to get any comfort, this was the Saturday before. Was anybody blessed by this newspaper? Did it add any faith to your heart? Then I received the Sunday paper last week that they made a little note. They made a note that said, this paper is being printed on Saturday because of the storm that's coming on Sunday. So they fed us what? Fear. What? slowly coming back to life. So you have got to make up your mind. I have got to make up my mind what I'm standing on. Now for some, there was hysteria. There was anxiety attacks. There was crying. There was fear. Yeah, in this room. Why? Confidence levels not listen that's not abnormal it's not abnormal we didn't know what we were dealing with it's not abnormal but to the believer you know you, you get yourself armed with the word with the promises with your CD playing you didn't have it you had your phone thank God we had the phone but the word of God comes and gives confidence 
If you were to judge yourself right now between one and 10, what would you say your confidence level was? I don't want to hear it because some of you are lying. Think to yourself, soul search. How did I do, God? Because this was a quiz. Did you have your anchor holding? Was your anchor holding? We sing it in times like these. My anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Paul said it in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 10, 35 and 36. I want us all to declare this together this morning in concert. Do not, therefore, fling away your fearless confidence. Let me hear you. For it is, carries a great and glorious compensation of reward. Are you saying this, Shabbat? For you have need of steadfast patience and endurance so that you may perform and fully accomplish the will of God and thus receive and carry away and enjoy to the full what is promised. Will you take that? Will you take that scripture? Fearless confidence. Now listen, it's one thing to say it to you. It's another thing for you to live it. Fearless confidence. No, Pastor, I, I tell you the truth, I didn't know what to go all by myself. And, I, and that's common. You know, you're not a rock that you don't feel what's going on. But fearless confidence. And the Holy Spirit has spoken to me and said, you've got to build up my body because things are going to happen in the future that they are going to need fearless confidence. How many want fearless confidence in your God? Seven people. How many want fearless confidence in your God? You are a survivor this morning. You survived another storm. You survived, you know what, you know what the word storm means? I took it out of the total big paragraph. A disturbance, a significant disturbance of normal conditions in the atmosphere. How many of you have had disturbances in the atmosphere of your life? Not only a hurricane, folks. But situations come in and bombard you. Where did you ever say, where did that come from? But that's your test to see if you have fearless confidence. Fearless confidence, okay? How many survivors do we have? Tell your neighbor. Neighbor, you're sitting next to a survivor. And you see, survivors have an unusual sound. Survivors are praising the Lord. Survivors jumped in here this morning and they took in the atmosphere and they didn't waste a moment of worship. It's like, excuse me, I've come here to offer up a praise to my God. Excuse me if I seem a little unruly, but you didn't know where I came from this week. How many unusual praises do we have? You've got to be an unusual praiser when we come together. See, the, the, we confuse the enemy because he's throwing everything at us. You, this might go through the window. The branch might come on your house. I just praise the Lord. I just lift my hands to heaven and praise the Lord. That's, Ill, that's really odd. We bring him into confusion when that happens. You are storm resistant. You are better than any shutter that is being, I saw in that storm station, they, they get this big two by four and they throw it into the steel wall. It still goes in a little bit. I just want to know when are you ever going to get a, a hurricane that's going to throw a, a two by four into your window? It's usually branches. and. But anyway, they show you all the different shutters that are out there. And the Holy Spirit said, you are shuttered, Lynn Bracco. You are storm resistant. 
He cannot enter this mind. He can't. This mind is storm resistant. Is it? How many have storm resistant minds? Seven. How many have storm resistant minds? By your confession, you become. Okay? You do have a storm resistant mind because you're sitting here and you're not. There. You made it. You didn't go crazy, did you? You got that? Yeah, we're not here doing that. Do that to your neighbor. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> How did it happen? How did you get here this morning? How did we all make it through? And some folks, you know, texting me and saying, still wiping out, still getting stuff off my house. And, and we pray for those folks too. But I want to take you back to a story in Genesis 7, if you will, starting with verse 17. Hallelujah. Now the flood was on the earth 40 days. The waters increased and lifted up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters prevailed and greatly increased on the earth, and the ark moved above on the surface of the water. And the waters prevailed exceedingly on the earth, and all the high hills under the whole heavens were covered. The waters prevailed 15 cubits upward, and the mountains were covered. And all flesh died that moved on the earth, birds and cattle and beasts and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And every man, all in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life, all that was on the dry land died. So he destroyed all living things which were on the face of the ground, both man and cattle, creeping things and birds of the air. They were destroyed from the earth. Only Noah and those who were with him in the ark remained alive. And the waters prevailed on the earth 150 days. Now you all understand that this was what we have even in our insurance policies, an act of God. God acted to a people that were rolling around in sin. They were so out of sorts. He had to turn his face from them. It says he was sorry that he ever created them because they were so filled with distorted sin. Yes, later on we see that he put the rainbow in the sky and he said, I will never destroy my creation again with a flood. But do you understand that God hates sin? And you can't brush sin under the carpet. All of us are going to be facing the judgment of God for our lifestyle. Church, we've got to wake up and understand that we're living in the last days. Oh, but Pastor, let me tell you something. This was a flood of all floods. Could you possibly see in here somewhere uh, that one island, what is it, Barb not Barbados, uh, Barbuda. Barbuda is wiped out. Nothing. Do you imagine the poor people that couldn't get off Barbuda? They're dead, gone, houses, land. Isn't it somewhere in here? And he destroyed all things that were on the face of the ground. God had it up to here with the sin, the perversion that was going on and what he created. Now, I'm not trying to spook you, but I'm telling you something. There's only one place that you can hide, and that is in the ark of safety. Are you hearing me? We want confidence. This is, this is how you check yourself. Get ready. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those around you. Do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid of, are you ready for this? Bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, 
as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to one another, tender heart of forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. I believe that we have a choice this morning. You have a choice. You can either be complacent or you can be confident. I don't know what tomorrow brings, but I know as sure as I'm standing before you that he's bringing tomorrow to me. He's already there. You understand? He's already in Monday saying, come on, girl, I've cleared the way for you. Come with confident expectation that God is for us. Well, hallelujah, I trust you enjoyed this word today. It came right from my heart, from experience. And we're always learning things with God. We're never finished learning. And today I'm just so glad that I have my minister, Diane, with me. And uh, every family in this church has had to do something special to survive Hurricane Irma. And we've all made it. It was a wonderful day today to come together because we weren't able to meet last week because of the hurricane. But we came together with victory. We were survivors. We're storm resistant. And you, Minister Diane, you uh, heeded the evacuation as I did. Yes. And you went and drove all the way up to T Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee. Yes, Nashville, My Tennessee. My goodness. Now, we didn't leave because of panic. We left because of obedience. Absolutely. Yeah. And what did you feel? You were saying that you were praying during the night. We did. We traveled what was supposed to be an 11 and a half hour drive. Ended up taking 24 hours because was, everybody was leaving. Everybody was leaving. Uh, we got there. Um, my family was asleep. Now, my family is a family of 12. Okay. So there was no way that we could just stay here. We weren't even prepared, Pastor. Right, right. So long story short, I did um, spend my nights praying. Amen. And I was very specific praying for not only my home and my property, but for this church. Yes. For the families of this church. Yes. That was really important. That was really, really heavy on my heart. And... Um, I mean, God, we had victory. Amen. I mean, it went from a five to a two. Right. And not only that, but we have to understand that that is a time to intercede. Yes. When storms come, we can't get anxiety attacks and, and you know, pull our hair out. It's a time to hanker down and pray. That's exactly what I did. We have the power in prayer. Mm -hmm. you, you are thousands of miles away, but you still prayed the covering over your house. We have yes. to take advantage of that. We have the empowerment to protect what God has done. Even folks that have gone through some, you know, some flooding and lack of electricity, there's an attitude inside of us that, you know, we have peace. Yes. Oh yeah, I have peace. Peace. We're not we're not running here and there. And even to restore, he gives us the strength to restore out of the hurricane. Mm -hmm. A lot was learned, I think, in this hurricane. I think that major issues in our lives got back to being minors. Right. There's a lot of soul searching while you're praying out there for the storm. Oh, God, if you get me through this, oh, God, I'm going to change my whole attitude. <laughs> I'm going to concentrate on people more. I'm going to care for my in-laws. I'm going to love my mother. You know, that kind of a thing. I think we, we had a real uh, a soul search. Right. And we're able to change. Change is wonderful. Mm -hmm. The Lord looks for us to be buffed and polished. You yeah, know, amen. even with your children, it's a great example to show our kids. Our kids, the kids look at you to see if you're nervous. I'm going to be nervous. Right. And trust me, I I stayed strong. Yeah. I stayed firm. Yeah. And that's one of the things I learned from you, Pastor. That yes. you've taught me that. Yeah. Through trials and storms. I mean, you've been there through a lot of things that my yes. family have yes. and I have gone through. You've taught me that, and I actually. My kids saw it. Yes. And they, they were stable. Yeah. I didn't cry. I wasn't like, oh, I'm so scared or I'm worried. No, none of that. I stayed stable. Um, tranquility, peace was all upon me, upon my family. And my kids saw that. My grandkids saw that. Yeah. And I just focused and I said, God, we're in your hands. Amen. You have to believe that. Yes. And I, try, I truly did. Yes. Confidence in a God who will not fail. Amen. And perhaps that's where you're at today. I don't know uh, 
where you're watching us from, but if perhaps you've gone through this Hurricane Irma and your, your mind is still spinning, well, relax and call on the Lord and build up your confidence in your God. See, people that ran Helter Skelter were those that had no roots in God, those that had no confidence God's going to make it all come about. As, as I ministered a little while ago, it says after the great flood in Genesis and everything settled down, God remembered Noah. Mm-hmm. That word remembered, as I, I told you, means getting it all back together. Amazing, isn't that amazing? In one word, God's going to remember you today. Cry out to him, call out. By all means, call us. If you feel a little upset within yourself, there's a number on your screen. We have prayer counselors here. We'd love to pray that assurance and confidence back to you. So right now, call the number on your screen. If you want a a CD or a DVD of this message, it was so good. You only got a little part, part of it, a little snippet. I'd be glad to send it to you absolutely free. Just give us a call. Tell us you want that CD. I talked about Harvey, what his name meant, Irma, what her name means, and any future storm. They're wicked, they're horrible, but we have the power in Jesus' name to make it through. And until we see you again, you be blessed, highly favored, and empowered to prosper.